video will provide you with general information regarding the importance of living trust and estate planning. Welcome to the Living Trust and Estate Planning Seminar. My name is Evelyn Gillespie and I'm a licensed attorney in the state of California. Living trust and estate planning are very important, but most people don't find the time to do it. Most people procrastinate. They talk about getting it done, but come up with reasons on why they'll do it later. So let me first commend you on taking the time to watch this video. Although I will provide information on legal issues, this information should not be taken as legal advice because everyone's situation is different. What is an estate? An estate includes two things, your property and your family. Your property includes things like your house, car, money, investments, and retirement. Your family includes the general concept of family, but can also include friends, charitable organization, and pets. You may have heard the term estate planning, and wondered, what does that really mean? Is it only for the wealthy? Is it the same as a living trust? Many people think that estate planning is only for the wealthy, but that's not true. Estate planning is important no matter how big or small your estate. Think about it. If you work hard to have a house in savings, would you want it to go to lawyer fees, court costs, and taxes? Or would you want it to go to your loved ones? Estate planning is a way to specify your needs, wants, and desires for your property and your family. Let's look at the estate planning of it says, I want to control my property while I'm alive and take care of myself and my loved ones if I become disabled. I want to give my property to whomever I want, the way I want, and when I want. And I want to save every last tax dollar, professional fee, and court costs legally possible. This is what estate planning is about. Now there are different estate planning options, but some are more effective than others. Let's look at the number one estate planning option. 65 to 70 percent use this option. Do you have any idea what it is? Unfortunately, the answer is almost too obvious for most people to get. Most people do nothing. Yes, that's an estate plan. When a person does not create an estate plan, the state will create one for you. State law will determine who gets your property, how much they will receive, and when they will receive it. This is done through probate. In California, if you have an estate that's valued greater than $150,000, or real estate that's valued greater than $50,000, then your estate will go through the probate process. If you do nothing and meet that criteria, your family is headed to probate court. But why would someone do nothing? It's simple. No costs, no lawyers, no paperwork. You don't have to think about death, and you won't be here, so why worry about it? Let's look at the probate process. Paperwork is initially filed with the court. Then you have to give notice to all heirs, and this is done through publishing the notice in the newspaper. A personal representative is appointed. This is the person who will oversee the estate. Property and debts are identified. Then creditors are notified. The court appraises any real estate. Heirs are identified by the judge. Creditors, attorney fees, personal representative fees, and other debts are paid. And finally, the rest goes to your beneficiary. Now, if you own property in another state, for example, you have another house in Nevada, you would have to have an ancillary probate. The word ancillary may sound fancy, but it's not. It's simply probate in another state. Another major factor to consider is the cost of probate. If you have a house valued at $750,000 and bank accounts valued at $250,000, your estate is valued at $1 million. It doesn't matter if you have a mortgage on your house, the courts value your property based upon the fair market value, not the equity in your home. Now there are different fees associated with the probate process. You have a filing fee and the probate referee that's assigned to the case will also have fees. There's also the cost associated with the appraisal of any real estate. Remember you have to publish in the newspaper. The court also has a distribution fee to finally give your assets to your heirs. You may think that's not a lot considering we're talking about a million dollar estate. But let's look at the statutory attorney fees. On a million dollar estate, the lawyer is entitled by statute to $23,000 in attorney fees. Also, whoever is serving as the personal representative is also entitled to that same amount, another $23,000. If the lawyer has to do any work classified as extraordinary, and usually there is, then most attorneys will bill at their hourly rates. One could easily spend over $48,000 on probate costs before one penny goes to their loved ones. So you're probably thinking, you don't have a million dollar estate. Okay, the filing fees, distribution fees, and publication fees are going to be essentially the same. Let's look at the statutory attorney fee and personal representative fee. If you have an estate valued at $300,000, the statutory attorney fee is $9,000, and the statutory personal representative fee is also $9,000. That's $18,000 gone. If you have a mortgage on your property, it will have to be paid. You can easily see how probate can leave little for your loved ones. 
Another factor to consider is probate is public. There's no privacy. Everything becomes public record. Everything you owned, what you were worth, everyone you owed, the name and ages of your heirs including where they live, and what assets your heirs will receive. Now we can all imagine some people taking advantage of this information. Unfortunately, we live in a world where some people are not honest. Someone will come in and con your loved ones because the information was so easy for them to find. Lastly, time is another factor to consider. Probate proceedings can take a long time. I've heard of families fighting in probate proceedings lasting up to 13 years. Although most probates can be handled in about two years, that's still a long time. Another popular estate planning option is a will. With the will, you give instructions to the probate court on how you want your property distributed at your death. You can also name guardians to care for any minor children. But if you have an estate that's valued greater than $150,000 or real estate that's valued greater than $50,000, then your estate will have to go through the probate process. A better estate planning device is the living trust. A revocable living trust is a written legal document that partially substitutes for a will. With the living trust, your assets are put into the trust, managed for your benefit during your lifetime, and then transferred to your beneficiaries when you die. Most people name themselves as the trustee in charge of managing their trust assets. This way, even though your assets have been put into the trust, you remain in control of your assets during your lifetime. You can also name a successor trustee who will manage the trust assets if you ever become unable or unwilling to do so yourself. A revocable living trust may be changed or revoked at any time during your lifetime. You maintain control. The revocable living trust becomes irrevocable at one's death. Then your assets go to your desired beneficiaries without probate. A living trust is a very important document that reduces family fights over inheritances. It is designed to avoid probate. By far, it is one of the most important estate planning documents. However, it is not the only estate planning document you will need. Many people think that a living trust is an estate plan, but it's only one part. There are other very important documents that make up an estate plan. Imagine a person who had a stroke and is temporarily unable to care for himself. He has a wife who comes to the hospital and wants to be in charge of his medical decision. The hospital says, where's the paperwork to show that you have the power to make decisions on his behalf? She says, but I'm his wife. Unfortunately, that's not good enough. He needs an advanced health care directive. An advanced health care directive allows you to name the person that you want to make medical decisions on your behalf if you're unable to do so. Without it, the wife would have to go to probate court and request conservatorship of her husband. This could be avoided with an advanced health care directive, which is also an important estate planning document. Along the same line, a person might want specific people to have information about their medical status. In order for a hospital to share medical information about you to others, you must have the person listed on a HIPAA authorization form. Think about this. If you have minor children and something happened to you and you didn't come home tonight, who would take care of your children? That's a scary thought. The possible answers could be even scarier. Estate planning allows you to name a guardian that will have the authority to act under the law. No one wants their kids sitting in foster care while a responsible adult goes to probate court for guardianship. Let's go back to the estate planning oath. I want to control my property while I'm alive and take care of myself and my loved ones if I become disabled. I want to give my property to whomever I want, the way I want, and when I want. And I want to save every last tax dollar, professional fee, and court costs legally possible. A living trust combined with the power of attorney, advanced health care directive, HIPAA authorization, nomination of guardian, and pour of a will does just that. If you only have a will or do nothing, you will have attorney fees, delayed distribution, public disclosure of your assets, debts, and heirs, maximum emotional impact, court-appointed guardians and conservators. It's easily contested, totally public, and court controlled. With the living trust, there's no attorneys, except for preparation. No court control, no probate, no guardianship, no conservatorship, no hassles, no delays, no unnecessary expense. It's private and family control. Times change and circumstances change. You wouldn't want anything to happen to you, and you still have your ex-husband as the person in charge of your estate. Which do you want for your family? If you already have an estate plan, it may be time to have it reviewed. There may be changes in the law, or the death, birth, marriage, divorce, or disability of one of your heirs or successor trustees. Many people feel that they can do their trust by themselves using self-help templates, but it's the conversation that you have with an attorney that truly allows your desires and needs to be effectively drafted. You don't want to just have a legally valid trust, you want an effective one. People love to play lawyer, but no one wants to play doctor. Would you operate on yourself? We know the expression. 
He who represents himself has a fool for a client. So don't procrastinate any longer. Get your initial estate plan documents completed or have your existing estate plan reviewed. It's easy. The initial consultation is free. The only thing that you have to lose is time, and we all have a lot of that, right? You can have peace of mind in three easy steps. The initial consultation, where we will discuss your estate planning option. The plan and design meeting, where we will create a custom estate plan for you. And lastly, you sign your documents. Call to schedule your free initial consultation today. I look forward to helping you achieve your estate planning needs so that you can have peace of mind. After listening to this seminar, are you just going to do nothing?